I'm a makeup artist, but I'm not a beauty vlogger. I have a family, but I'm not a mummy vlogger, and I live in Italy, but I'm not a travel vlogger. In fact, it's pretty hard to put me in a category. You come to my channel because you love Italy, right? In particular, you love Positano and the Amalfi Coast. That's probably why you found yourselves here in the first place. So maybe I'm just an Amalfi Coast vlogger. It's a tiny niche category, but it's what I do best, so I'm sticking with it. Except that everyone deserves time off, right? Everyone gets time off to go away or take a break. You see, living in a coastal tourist destination, every time I leave the house, I see hundreds of people on vacation all around me. And sometimes I want that too. The thrill of discovering a new place, the sense, the accents and the strong memories those days away create. But in the last few years, while I've been sharing my life on social media, a strange thing has happened. I started to feel guilty every time I go away. Guilty that I'm letting down all the people who are here to see Positano. It's stupid, I know, but as more and more people are tuning in to see the beauty of the Amalfi Coast that I share, I feel as if I'm letting people down if I go away. You see, I'm a people pleaser, and it's hard to say no when someone asks me to do something. The last two years have been easy for me as we haven't been allowed to travel as much as before. But now, as the world is getting back to normal, I feel the pull to return to England at least once every two months, as I always used to do. Because I am English and still have my family and friends there and I miss them and I want to spend time with them still. And I still want to travel. Well, not travel exactly, but have time away. Visit a new town or a new region every now and again or a weekend away. YouTube does not let you have time off. If you don't upload on a regular basis, you get punished by being shown less and recommended less. So if I wanted to go away, I either have to prepare videos in advance to cover the gap, or I have to take you with me. And not everybody likes that. But in the end, this is my life, so I'm doing it my way. And this week, I'm taking you away with me to a different area of Italy. We're taking a few days off from Positano and we're going down south. are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Hello Olly, sei pronto per andare? Vuoi andare? Devo fare un'esplorazione. Sì? Queste sono le valigie che porterò giù mentre Niki è andata su quindi siamo pronti, possiamo andare Come mai Niki è andata su? E io sto andando giù è semplice praticamente portare le valigie giù è più facile quindi Niki è andata su senza le valigie giusto una piccola borsa e io porto giù le valigie più pesanti quindi niente, poi ci troviamo giù e siamo pronti per partire. Olli, Olli sembra voler dire qui comando io in macchina. We need to get another dog seat because Indy is in the one that we have and she's really, really, really well behaved. She just sleeps. Well, this one here is never relaxed, wants to be in the front, wants to be with us, don't you? Why don't you go and sit down? Indy just threw up, so we had to stop to clean up the mess and we thought we would take the opportunity for her to have a wee-wee. She's not really used to doing wee-wees outside of the garden. Lo sapete quando uno guida e poi si ferma ma non sa nemmeno dov'è? Ecco, questo è il punto. Non sappiamo dove siamo. Dove siamo, amore? Non ho idea. <ride> We 
we are halfway, more than halfway in our trip at, hello, okay. <laughs> <laughs> down, <laughs> um, it's lunchtime, so we've stopped for lunch in a place called Canos, so we're on our way to, we're in Puglia, we've just crossed the border, so we're in Puglia, we're going a bit further down, we're in a place called Canosa in Puglia now, and we've stopped for lunch, we found this tiny little restaurant, it seems to be the only place open in town, everything's closed. I'll show you the town when we've finished. See. Sí. Queste sono orecchiette al ragù di salsiccia. Buone. It's suddenly become very hot. It's it's real summer weather now. It must be in the mid 20s. And um, the street reminds me of France. I don't know why. It's all very very quiet here. There's hardly anybody around. All the shops closed. But it's this long avenue with trees. And it just reminds me of somewhere in France. We are now heading back to the car. We're going to go and have a quick look at the main street and the church. Let's go. It's amazing, we've only done two hours in the car and look how the stone has changed from where we are. This is all this white, shiny stone. I mean, it's very typical of Puglia, but it's completely different to where we are. The roads are, are paved with these big tiles. Ho avuto qualche giorno libero e ho approfittato con Niki di fare questa cosa e uscire un po' fuori Positano. Yeah, it's been ages since we've been out, well it hasn't been ages, it was Christmas when we went to England, but it feels like ages, so it is time to go and explore somewhere new. So we thought we'd come somewhere where we haven't really been before. I have been to Puglia, um, but I was here for work, so I didn't really get to do what I wanted to do. And have you been to Puglia before? Sei stato in Puglia già? Uh, sì, sì, siamo stati insieme in Puglia, ma abbiamo fatto solo qualche giorno, siamo andati al Berobello. Ah, oh, yeah. Oops, yeah. We have been together. You forgot? <laughs> yeah. I love these old buildings with the old battered blinds outside. There's a very noisy school group over there. Sono un po' chiassosi questi ragazzini. Devi fare questa cosa del QR code, dai, fammi. No, you have to. I don't have works on my phone. There's, there's hidden pictures in each one. Each one looks like an animal. But there's one over there that looks like a face. Oh no! Quello uccello che ce l'ha la cosa lunga. Oh sì. Hai visto lì c'era una dedica a un cane? C'era una dedica a un cane, nuvola, sì. il cane di Canosa. Il problema con Indy è che non è stata abbastanza enough e non si può andare fuori di casa. Abbiamo bisogno di andare sulla beach, ma solo per andare fuori dal mare. Non voglio mettere la macchina in un'altra casa per altre due ore fino a che si è andata perché è stato. è stato. well, since we left home this morning. Polly's weed about 20 times already, but Indy just won't go. And I know when she goes, it's going to be a big one. <laughs> Sorry to talk about weeds, but you like it when I keep it real, don't you? <laughs> In 800 meters at the roundabout, take the second exit. We have the navigator set in English and it pronounces the Italian words so badly. This word here, it just pronounces, it's, say it, Strada Comunale Giannecchia. Giannecchia. She actually said Gianneccia. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the view, but there's so many squashed flies on the windscreen at the moment that you can hardly see through them. But nearly there. This is it. Così che voglio arrivare a casa amore. La macchina davanti alla casa. Perfetto. 
The Itria Valley in Puglia is most famous for its trulli. These round dry stone huts with conical roofs are thought to have first been built in the 14th century and became prolific in the 19th century. The limestone used to build the trulli and the lime whitewash used to paint the walls are all from the area. They just used what they had to hand. Sometimes you'll see symbols painted on the roofs. These can be good luck charms, to ward off evil, or simply to identify the trullo, a bit like house numbers. Likewise, the pinnacles on the top of the trulli may be just ornamental, or may be there to indicate the social status of the owner, or maybe even the mark of the trullo builder. It seems that everybody has a different theory. Alborobello has the highest concentration of trulli, over 1,000 in the centre of town, but they are scattered all over this area in Puglia. We are staying in this beautiful trullo called Il Sette Coni, which means the Seven Cones, and it's just outside the town of Cisternino, which is one of the most beautiful towns in Italy, apparently. We are looking forward to exploring the area. So we rented a trullo in Puglia for three nights. It's called the Sette Coni. It's actually divided into three separate apartments. I will show you the one we're staying in. Let's go have a look. It's really pretty. So this is the entrance. And there is a little barbecue area there. Let's go in. So this is the living room. You walk straight into it. It's a beautiful airy light room. It's warm enough to leave the front door open. There's a fireplace. There's a really buzzy fly just come in. That's the view out the door. Look how close we can park our car. Absolute luxury. The ceiling looks like this. It doesn't go all the way up to the point, this one. Through to the bedroom, which is a lovely little room here. It's in another cone, so this one goes all the way up to the point. And we've got a little terrace out here. There you go. So we've just got this little closed courtyard garden here with a lovely view. Nobody's staying in this one at the moment. So that's what it looks like from here. It's very pretty, it's like a little smurf house. And obviously they are dog friendly, which is great. And then we go through here to the little kitchen, which is stocked with all the basics. You two have made yourselves at home, haven't you? And down the end here, there's a lovely little bathroom. Very modern. A lovely shower. And if you're wondering where the dog is going to sleep, Indy's normally um, crated. I couldn't bring the crate, it was just too big to carry up the steps. So I bought the rug that she, it, actually they both love this rug, which is on my side of the bed. And I think they will both happily sleep there. Che bel campo di papaveri dietro di te. Yeah, I knew there'd be loads here. We decided to come out for a walk because a certain madam still hasn't had a wee today. She has to learn to do it outside the garden. You need a wee wee. Um, and we found this little track and there looks like there's some abandoned old truly up here. So we're going to walk up here and have a look. Which means I have to go away from the poppy field and I could <laughs> quite happily sit here forever. Ci sono più di un trullo. Uno da qui, uno qua di fronte a me. Questo sembra proprio abbandonato. Cresciuto anche un albero molto vicino. E sembra che ce n'è anche un altro sulla destra. Sì, è in vendita. C'è scritto quanti soldi vogliono? No. <ride> Thousand square meters of land. Wow. 
se qualcuno è interessato ecco qua c'è anche il numero di telefono eh sì c'è un altro trullo laggiù c'è un'entrata C'è una pulla lì dentro. C'è una piscina dentro. Ma davvero? Dai, eh. non scherzare. Oh wow! Eh. Davvero! Volevo solo vedere se c'era una porta. Eh, voglio andare a vedere eh la piscina. <ride> Era una casa, la gente abitava con il filo con la lampadina, il camino e la piscina. Look at the tiles still on the wall. Oh, oh wow, proprio un lampadario, il tetto. Ma che? Ma sei scema! Mi hai fatto spaventare! Il pavimento è buono, no? <ride> Questa è la nostra stanza da letto. Compriamo questo trullo, amore. Lo compriamo questo trullo? Io lo. Come lo vuoi? Per quanto trullo? Oh, è like the floor, dai. Sì, questo è bello questo pavimento. Eh? Eh. C'è uno scolo d'acqua. Probabilmente qua sotto c'è un pozzo. Eh, questi sono sinks per l'acqua. Ah sì, ci sono le vasche d'acqua. No, ma io dico qua, dove c'è qui? Questo da mettere? Sicuro che c'è un pozzo. Infatti... Eh. Uh. C'era anche una lucertola. Amore, la, la dobbiamo comprare questa proprietà. Vedi, poi la cosa più incredibile di questa proprietà è che puoi arrivare con l'auto fino a qua. Ci abbiamo il pozzo per l'acqua accendiamo qualche lume per fare luce e siamo a posto, non abbiamo bisogno di nient'altro no? no why not? I don't want to live in a trullo la facciamo un po' più grande no? amore, questo trullo sembra abbandonato, andiamo a vedere ok God. vieni con me, io ti proteggo there's a fox skull here Obviously it's been a while since somebody's come here. I mean, what do you do when you go on holiday? <laughs> oh wow. Vi porto io, io sono più coraggioso. Indy! Sì, qui c'è la vista sull'altro trullo. Oh, c'è un fienile qua, penso, c'avevano gli animali qua dentro. So these truly, nobody knows exactly who built them and why, but there's no cement in between the stones. And if you look at the roofs, they are just stones piled on top of each other with nothing holding them in place. You could easily dismantle one very, very quickly. And that could be a reason why they're built like this. Maybe it was to avoid taxes. This is one of the hypotheses, is that it was to avoid taxes and they could quickly dismantle the house if the tax men came. Quite handy. <laughs> Okay, it's getting dark now, it's eight o'clock in the evening. We thought we were coming to the nearest town to get something to eat. It's absolutely beautiful here, have a look at this. Ciao. 
gonna get a little present for Elizabeth. Now these, you might, you could hang them, but you can also plant them in a vase, and you don't have to water them. Or you can pretend if you want. But I thought that was quite a pretty yeah, present. Exactly that. Don't miss our next episode where we get up to more adventures discovering Puglia and just maybe I go for a swim. Can't think of it anything that I'd less like to do. Vogliamo venire qua a vivere? No.